I've been encouraging you for several months now to cultivate the practice of watching and listening and then thinking about what you're seeing and hearing and then being prepared to act as you're led by the Spirit of God, that you don't, don't just imagine that because of your faith and the position you've uh, secured in that, that you're a conscientious objector to what's happening in our world. I believe we're called to be salt and light. And to do that, we have to have some awareness. Now, I've, said, I've encouraged you to have some limits around that. Too much information is overwhelming. You want to be more aware of what God is doing than what the adversary is. But if we are not aware, we're vulnerable and we're easily sidelined. And then there's some things that are happening that I think are worthy of our awareness so that we can pray in an informed way, in a purposeful way, in an intentional way. Because our faith isn't lived just in the context of academia. We don't have a theological faith, just a theoretical faith. Our faith has to be expressed in very practical ways in the midst of our world. And there's some things that are happening around us that are, are really, um, truly remarkable. Uh, this, in the last few days, there's been a whole series of documents released from Twitter. And I, I suspect some of you don't tweet a great deal. But I assure you, it's a very powerful platform for speech and communication. And in many, many ways, it sets the narrative for the more traditional forms of media. And what's become abundantly apparent in the last few days is that censorship, truthfully, the discarding of free speech and the betrayal of the First Amendment is just an undeniable part of our current circumstance. That's awkward to say out loud. It's awkward to look at. It's uncomfortable. I would rather look away. But in the midst of that, what is being presented is that our government, our intelligence apparatus, and even federal law enforcement have all engaged in fundamental violations of our Constitution. Now, that's not the most distressful part. The media and our leaders, for the most part, demonstrate no outrage or even any interest. It leaves us to a conclusion that gaining power or the maintenance of power or the expansion of power have triumphed in many ways over the rule of law. The documents released from Twitter reveal a pattern of behavior to control ideas, thought, the exchange of information on a scale that we have never before seen. The revelations have been met with a shrug of indifference. We're being told there's nothing to see here. Let's just move on to more important issues. There's been no expressions of remorse, apology, or even embarrassment. In fact, in most cases, the responses have been arrogant, brash, and dismissive. Now, if you've been around here much, you've heard me say, and I want to repeat it, that our problems are fundamentally spiritual. And I believe the political and societal leaders are once again just reflecting the attitudes of God's people. What we're seeing in that uncomfortable mirror of those that we choose to provide leadership for us are our own hearts. Because when we're confronted with our sinful behaviors and our collusions with evil, for the most part, we have lacked remorse or even embarrassment. We just want to move forward. Let's get past that season. Let's not talk about it. Let's make another set of choices and act as if that didn't define a block of our lives or a part of our journey. Let's go forward and collect our sought-after objectives and imagine there will be no accountability. You see, heartfelt repentance amongst God's people will precede transformation in the public square. I believe that. I believe if we want to see our leaders choose a new course and respond in a different way, it will begin with a different response in the hearts and the minds of God's people. If we are unaware or indifferent or ambivalent to what is happening around us, it's because we are so absorbed in our personal agendas that we imagine no responsibility. I will remind you of what I know you are already aware of. God's people are called to be salt and light. And we've been entrusted with an assignment to proclaim the truth in each generation. The fulfillment of this divine trust demands of us awareness and a willingness to prioritize kingdom initiatives. Let the change begin with us. Amen. 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 Now, on a bit of a different note, but equally startling to me, 
perhaps in a less widespread venue, but it's certainly indicative of something that is challenging us. I read this week that the American girl doll brand is facing, fortunately, some backlash over a book that they have published targeted at prepubescent girls. American Girl Doll, promoting gender transition without parental consent. The book is titled A Smart Girl's Guide to Body Image, which is marketed to girls ages 3 to 12. And it encourages children to talk with a doctor if they are questioning their gender identity. Now, while that is shocking and surprising, it's indicative of a larger conversation that is very prevalent in our culture. If you're just kind of sort of paying attention, you're bumping into that. And I, I thought it was worth pausing just a moment because I think the truth needs to be told and it needs to be told consistently and it can be told in a kind way, but it doesn't make it less the truth. Gender is not confusing. Uh, that's not to say that there aren't persons who struggle with that, but we shouldn't act as if that fundamental part of our person is a point of confusion. My father, as you know, was a veterinarian, so I grew up with a lot of animals. I've helped many families, you know, locate a new puppy or a new kitten. I've been called to, to many farms where there were new calves that have arrived or new foals that have been born. And I promise you, with puppies, it's not confusing. In fact, if you're getting a puppy for Christmas, you'll want to know if it's male or female. If the person selling you the puppy says, well, it's confusing. <laughs> Go to another provider. Amen. Well, it isn't confusing with babies either. Amen. So I, I just want to encourage you not to be confused by the demonic assaults upon our children and families. You don't have to be angry or belligerent. You just need to be aware of the truth and understand what's happening. Your common sense, the spirit of God within you, and your life experience are sufficient to guide you through this discussion. Don't be intimidated by celebrities or academics with agendas or even religious leaders who have rejected the counsel of Scripture. Just quietly and with confidence in the Word of God, be strong and courageous and use your voice. Amen. Amen. It's an important time for the church to be the church. Amen. And as much as we might like to huddle in our buildings and do polite Bible studies, I believe we have to be prepared to take the truth of God into the world in which we live. Hey, this is Pastor Allen. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, like it, and most importantly, share it with your friends. If you want to be notified when there's new content and we post new material, if you'll just subscribe to my channel and hit the bell, you'll get the notification. Most of all, I pray God blesses you as you continue on your spiritual journey and open your heart to the Lord. God bless.